If you don't believe in aliens, this may change your mind. I have butterflies, bro. Evelyn saw a shooting star, then these people say there's aliens in their backyard. So there's two people or two subjects that are in your backyard? Correct, and they're very large. They're okay. like eight foot. Nine feet, ten foot, I don't know. They're, they, look like, they look like aliens to us. He got a good look at one of the creatures, he said, a greenish, grayish being with large eyes and long legs. He says he could hear its deep breaths. Big eyes, they have big eyes, like, like I can't explain it, and big mouth. They're shiny eyes, and, and they're not human. They're 100% they're not human. By now, it's more than an hour after that bright light, officers meeting up with the caller and his family. What'd you see? It was like a, it was like a big creature. A big creature? Yeah, like a long test and talk. One of my partners said they saw something fall out of the sky too, so that's yeah. why I'm kind of curious. Like, Did you yeah, see anything like land you in your backyard? Or? You see like a big, uh, like a big something with light? Hey, this might sound like a really dumb question, but did you guys see anything fall out of the sky? Asking others what they yeah. saw. Uh, I would normally discount it as nothing. However, seeing as one of my partners said they saw it too, only reason I'm actually investigating it further. Think of how many millions have cameras on their phones, but nobody managed to get even one photo, let alone a video. Well, they almost did. So there's a surveillance camera in the backyard. What we were told is that at the moment this thing comes down and crash, this camera went out and it was out for a couple of minutes. When it came back on, the object was gone. But we've been told by Angel in multiple phone conversations that he shot video of the creatures. We haven't seen it and we don't know anybody else who's seen it yet. So maybe he'll release it at some point. Napoleon was right when he said, man will believe anything as long as it's not in the Bible. Do you believe in aliens? Yeah, I do. Yes. The Bible speaks of extraterrestrial life, or to be more biblical, something called celestial life. We know these alien beings more commonly as angels. Let me ask you a question. Are you disappointed that these celestial creatures are just angels and not something more exciting? If we feel like that, it could be because we don't see them as they are. Super exciting, unspeakably powerful beings that God uses for his purposes. The scriptures speak of many of these alien visitations. Let's just look at one. Just after Jesus rose from the dead, it was early in the morning when two women came to the empty tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Then we're given a description, so we know this wasn't just an eight-foot green creature walking around some backyard. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as wool, and the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. That is pretty soul-stirring. We are certainly not alone in the universe. Do you believe in aliens? Yes. Why not? I do. I don't know, they look weird. Are they gonna take over the world? Nah, I think they're just chilling up there. I think we made up the green man thing. I feel like it could literally be anything. Just shaped weird like weird heads. I believe that there's something out there. I feel like they come over here just to like check up on us, see what we're up to. And what are you up to? Anything good or bad? No, I'm just chilling, doing homework in the library. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe in God? No. So you believe some of the books in the library happened by chance? They had a cover and a title and page numbers and coherent sentences and all fell together without an author? Is that right? No book could ever create itself. Correct. And the whole of creation tells you there's a creator. Am I right? You're correct. Do you believe in angels? I don't know. You have no trouble believing in aliens. Why would you have problems with angels? They're not from this planet, so they qualify to be aliens. Do you believe in God? I don't believe in God. Are you an atheist? I don't know. I was Catholic growing up, so I'm just a confused. 20-something year old. Well, I was absolutely confused when I was 20 years old. Yeah. I had no idea why I was alive. Didn't know why I was gonna die. Didn't know what was gonna happen after death. An atheist is somebody who believes that nothing created everything. Nothing gave us flowers and birds and trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, the human eye, male and female and all the species. That's impossible. It's scientifically impossible for nothing to create anything because it's nothing. So obviously there was something in the beginning that created all this beautiful creation. You said there had to be. Yes, there had So you're no longer an atheist. Are you afraid of death? I don't believe I am. I think you are. 
And you think it's just that your pride won't allow you to say, I'm horrified by the thought of being buried six feet under the ground. I love life. I love the blueness of the sky, the sound of birds, love and laughter. Nobody in his right mind wants to die. And part of the will to live is a fear of death. You don't walk on a freeway, you don't step off thousand foot cliffs because you love your life. Why do we die? You said you've studied the Bible. Why is it if God exists that he gave us death? So we could be with him in the end. So we can learn, so we can experience. But I could do that without death. I don't want to lose my dog, my mum and dad, my brother and sister. I don't want to lose grandpa and grandma. Everything you hold dear to you is going to be ripped from your hands by this horrific thing called death that nobody talks about but everybody's scared of. Let me tell you what the Bible says death actually is. Do you remember that Bible verse, the wages of sin is death? Mm, it's kind of ringing a bell. Wait, could you tell me it? Yeah, it's Romans 6.23 and it's saying that God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a heinous criminal has committed multiple murders, he says you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages, this is what we're paying you. And Jackie, sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on death row. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. What a terrible tragedy that death is a reality. But it wasn't when human life began. When God first made Adam and Eve, there was no death. But when sin came, it alienated us from the life of God. It made us aliens, left outside of the kingdom of God. Ephesians 4.18 says of the unsaved, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart. So here's a big question. Do you think God is justified in giving you the death sentence? Are you that evil or are you a good person? I feel as though I'm a good person. Do you ever read the Bible? Not really. In the Old Testament, God promised to destroy death and in the New Testament, it tells us how he did it. Did you know that? I did not know that. How did he do it? Want me to tell you? Yeah. To do so, I'll have to back up. If you're a doctor and there's a patient in front of you. He looks extremely healthy, he feels good. You know he's got cancer, he's gonna be dead in two weeks. You've seen x-rays, poison seeping through a system. You've got a cure in your pocket. Do you show him the x-rays or give him the cure? We're gonna give the cure. That won't work, do you know why? Why? He thinks he's healthy, he's gonna say, what do I want a cure for? Get this out of my face. I don't need this. This is insulting me, doc, and he walks off. But if the doctor shows him the x-rays and he begins to sweat and says, wow, I can see this is serious. What should I do? then he's ready for the cure. I see. So I want to give the cure of the gospel to you, okay. but it's going to make no sense or even offend you if I don't show you the x-rays. Do you know what the x-rays are? The sins of the world? Well, it's the Ten Commandments. Oh, okay. You're doing anything you know he'd morally frown upon? When did you last look at pornography? About two years ago. That's looking with lust. And Jesus said when you do that, you commit adultery in your heart. How many lies have you told in your life? Too many to count. Ever stolen something? Yeah. Never use God's name in vain. Like when I say like, oh my G-O-D. That's yeah. called blasphemy. Yes. Do you love your mum? Yes, I do. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? No. Of course you wouldn't, that'd be dishonoring to you. And you've taken the name of the God that gave your mother and gave you life itself, his holy name, and use it in the place of a cuss word. It's called blasphemy, very serious. Okay, we're going personal, can you handle that? Yes, of course. Jesus said, if you look with lust, sexual desire, you commit adultery in the heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Yeah. Have you had sex before marriage? Yes. Okay, that's called fornication. Okay, here's a quick summation. This is for you to judge yourself. You've told me you're a lying, thieving, <laughs> blasphemous fornicator. Mm -hmm. And you've probably broken that one about lust. <laughs> so if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. You're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. His continual smile shows me that he's not at all concerned about his eternity. So I'm going to see if I can get rid of it. God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks at a criminal that laughs about the fact that he's murdered people, and the judge says, you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what we're paying you. This is what you've earned. And Anthony's sin is so serious to a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on death row. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. So you're in big trouble. Can you see that? Yeah, I could see it. Heaven or hell? Hell. You've earned your wages. Can you see that? God is justified. If he gives you justice, you're in big trouble. So what can you do to be saved from hell? Follow the rules. 
Okay, you've already broken the rules, so you can't follow them. So what can you do to have your sins forgiven? You heard of Jesus dying on the cross? Look, I got it right here. They, they pinned his hands and his feet like this, and they took a cross. So how does that help you 2,000 years later? Uh, my grandma gave it to me. Yeah, you don't know what it means, do you? No. He died for our sins. Now, most people know that, but they don't know this. And if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. That's why he said it is finished just before he died. He was saying paid in full. If you're in court and you've got speeding fines and somebody else pays them, a judge will let you go and it's legal. He'll say, you're guilty, but you're out of here. Someone paid your fine. That's kind of nice. It is kind of nice. And God can dismiss your case. He can take the death sentence off you legally because of what Jesus did on the cross through his death and resurrection. And all you have to do to find everlasting life, it's so simple a child can understand it, is repent of your sins. You don't call yourself a Christian, but you lie and steal and fornicate and blaspheme. That's playing the hypocrite. You've got to be genuine. And then you trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. Put your faith in him. And the miracle of conversion is that God will change you on the inside, make you a brand new person so you love righteousness. That'll be your personal miracle because that's foreign to sin-loving sinners. We love to do that which is wrong. But when God gets hold of you, he will transform you on the inside. He promises to open the eyes of your understanding, take you out of darkness into light, and grant you the gift of everlasting life so the fear of death doesn't torment you any longer because you've overcome it through the gospel. Is this making sense? Yes, this is making sense. You're going to think about what we talked about? Yes, of course, sir. When are you going to repent and put your trust in Jesus? Hmm. When I feel it's right in my heart, when I feel truly like... You and I are on a plane 10,000 feet up. We both are going to jump. I've got my parachute on, and I say, Jackie, got your parachute on? When are you going to put it on? You say, when I feel like it. When I really feel I can be sincere, the best thing I can do for you is hang you up the plane by your ankles for five seconds. When you come back in, you'll say, wow, I need a parachute. And what I've tried to do today is hang you out eternity by your ankles and say, this is deadly serious. You don't know when you're going to die. You could die in your sleep tonight. And we're talking about your life. It's not just who you're going to marry or what you're going to do for a job. This is your forever. Where God's offering everlasting life. So don't put it off. You know, Satan will whisper to you, put it off until tomorrow. Jesus said, watch the prophet a man, and that means a woman too, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. One other analogy. Would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? For a million? <laughs> whole million. They'll give you a little glass eye to slip in the slot. Would you do it for a million? No, it's one of my eyes. <laughs> would you sell both for a hundred million? No, no, no. You wouldn't think of it, would you? No. Your eyes are priceless, yet they are merely the windows of your soul. Yeah. The real you, your soul, Jackie, looks out those windows. If your eyes are without price, how much is your soul worth? And yet Jesus said this, he said, you should despise the value of those precious eyes compared to the value of your soul, your life. And this is what he said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, cast it from you, for it's better to enter heaven without an eye than go to hell with both your eyes. In other words, Think of the value of your life. Okay, that was my last attempt to hang you out the plane by your ankles, <laughs> hoping you'll see how serious this is and you'll get right with God today. Thank you, sir. You know what? It's kind of a crazy coincidence that you stopped to talk to me today because I have, I have a friend. Her name is Delilah, and she is very um, Christian, and she goes to church a lot and church events and stuff, and she's been inviting me, and I've been putting it off because I've been busy, but you know what? I'm going to go, and oh, you that's know, I, I hope it goes really well. But I hope you'll think about this with a sense of sobriety because you don't know when you're going to die. 150,000 people die every 24 hours, and many are young people, and youth is no guarantee of old age, so please think about this with a sense of sobriety. And ask yourself, why am I so earnest? And it's because I really do care about you, and I want to see you in heaven, not in hell. My mom would love this. She's very Christian. She's a Christian? Yes. Well, no doubt you're listening today because of her prayers. Yeah, that's what I figured. She would love this. Yeah. yeah Everything so. happens for a reason. So please honor her prayers and give some deep thought to this and discuss it with her because she cares about you, so do I, and so does God. Awesome. Is this making sense? Kinda, yeah.
kind of, so I've messed up. Let me start again. You're going to die. When you stand before God, you'll stand as a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, adulterer at heart. If that happens, God will damn you. You'll end up in the lake of fire. That horrifies me. I love you. I don't want you to go to hell. God is rich in mercy. He provided a Savior. Jesus took the punishment for the sin of the world, and your sins can be washed away in an instant. You can be forgiven and granted everlasting life as a free gift, all because of that death and resurrection. But you must let go of those sins, repent, and trust in Jesus. Does that make sense, or do you want me to go through it again? No, it makes sense now. This is a life and death issue. Yours, not mine. I'm saved. I'm trusting in Christ. But at the moment, you're on a precipice. You could fall into death and be damned forever. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, He that seeks to save his life will lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall save it. So give up your life to the God that gave you life. And he promises he'll preserve you through death into eternity, into a new coming kingdom on this earth. So God's will will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. So now do you understand what that cross means? Yeah, it makes a lot more sense. It does. So you're going to think about what we talked about? Yeah, I will, most definitely. Would you be embarrassed if I pray with you? Father, I pray for Anthony. I thank you this day. He's That friend, Delilah, loves you. She's been praying for you and praying that some guy will come past and stop and talk to you and, <laughs> and this has happened today. Would you be embarrassed if I pray with you? No, not at all. It's barren prayer. Father, I thank you for Jackie and for her open heart. Thank you for Delilah and her faithful witness to her friend. Today I pray Jackie will understand your love expressed in the cross and how serious this is and that this day she'll repent and trust alone in Jesus and pass from death to life all because of your kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Old Testament uses the word alien five times, but not in the context of extraterrestrial life. It refers to either being a stranger to acquaintances, or is used to describe strangers dwelling in another country without being naturalized. The word alien is used in the New Testament to describe the tragic state of those who are unsaved, being aliens, having no hope and without God in the world. But when we repent and trust in Jesus, we're no longer aliens. We are welcomed into the kingdom of God as citizens. You know, I wasn't even coming this way. I usually go another direction. <laughs> I was going over to the local college yeah. and uh, saw you sitting here by yourself on this green grass and, and how wonderful that, that we got to talk and that you listen to the gospel. Can I give you a book that I've written? It's called Scientific Facts in the Bible and it'll boost your faith in God and in his promises. Great to talk to you, Jackie. It was great talking to you. So you don't know how much this really means to me. It's, it's been great. You really blessed me today. I was having a really hard day. People often say, I'd love you to talk to my unbelieving friend or family member. Well, why not send them this video? Just click on the share button and say, I'd love to know what you think of this. There's nothing offensive about that. Send it and then pray. Do it today. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of the most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com. If you haven't seen this video, you've got to watch it. Something amazing happened at the end, but don't cheat by going to the end first. You can watch it right now by clicking up to your left.